To be or not to be? That is the question. <laughs> no, the question is, how do I, as a film director, work with an actor to help them get into their roles? Or how do I stay out of their way so that they can get into their roles? Basically, what is acting and how do the really great actors, how do they do it? What is it they're doing? I, I really, I honestly, I don't, I don't understand. So join me on the ride and uh, let's talk through it. Uh, never mind that monkey in the background. Hey, good morning, lovely people of the planet. This is Jeff O. This is the Morning Ride Pedal Powered Podcast. Thanks for showing up on the ride with me this morning. This uh, chilly, wet, damp Thursday in January, at the end of January 2020. Hey, if you're here for the first time and you don't know, I'm just a dude on a bicycle talking through how I'm trying to evolve as a filmmaker, as a writer, poet, and as a human being. Thank you so much for being on the ride with me this morning. <laughs> so, I hope I didn't scare you with the bad acting back there. <laughs> the thing is, I really am curious about acting. And uh, as someone who's wanting to be a filmmaker, wanting to evolve as a filmmaker, see as a professional, I do a lot of marketing type videos for the university. I do a lot of instructional video. Whew. My breathing's up. Sorry, folks. Pedaling too hard. Had to pass a go-kart back there. Get around them. Go-kart. The cool people that keep the green belt up for us. I really do appreciate them. That dude in particular, super respectful of bicycle traffic. Appreciate you, dude. But most of the videos that work that I do fall along, hey, good morning, along the lines of uh, marketing, PR, or journalistic kind of stuff. So it's rare that I'm actually staging acting. I'm usually with a camera talking with someone who is informing us about something or hopefully <laughs> inspiring us about something. So I've been thinking a lot about acting because I've got some short film projects that just about got ready. I'd like to put a crew together, get some folks together and start making some short films. And it hit me, I haven't done a lot of work with actors. Now, not a lot of people know this, so keep it to yourself, please. I accidentally ended up with a degree in opera. <laughs> I know, how do you accidentally end up with a degree in opera? Well, I say accidentally because I had no intention of being an opera singer. Um, I just wasn't going to be in the marching band and I needed a music scholarship. So they were like, well, you got to sing in the choir and you got to perform in opera. So I started taking voice lessons. Anyway, I had a little minimal acting training with that hung out with the theater kids a couple semesters in college, did some plays, but to be honest, I've had no actor training. I think this podcast is about as much acting, well, I guess with performing poetry, there's some acting with, within all of that, right? I mean, there's some acting even like, I guess, in our day jobs, you know, a lot of times you smile and say, yeah, let me think about that when you mean there's no way in blankety blank I'm going to do that. And then, so it's kind of an act. So we're not unfamiliar with this idea of shifting a moment in truth, truthfulness, using oppositional semiotics that is the study of how we make meaning through signs, gestures, speech, tone. I've talked a lot about that with poetry, right? The effects of, the, of poetry on the physical body. Study of semiotics gets us into that, signs and meaning. Which, I wonder if that has anything to do with Carl Jung's work on ar archetypes and meaning. You know, what is his book, uh, Man and His Symbols? I don't know. There's so many things I don't know, folks. 
I started writing a poem this week. It opened with, she asked me to tell her something she didn't know. Huh. Where do you go from there? You can go anywhere from there. It's not a great opening line for a poem. Someone could make it great. Anyway, so I did a little bit of research for us because that's what I like to do. Intellectualize that which I don't understand so that I can put a noun to it. Say, ah, here's the thing. And this is what thing is. It's a dangerous thing to do, I know. It's uh, That gets into the problems of diversity, right? Us versus them. If we didn't have those pronouns, us and them, we might get along differently with one another. Okay, Jeffrey, that is not the point. So the big point is... Oh, first our history lesson on acting. Kind of all of this before theater even, and uh, some of it before film. So, in the Western tradition, that is a tradition that came from the Greeks only, there are so many traditions, Chinese theater, Japanese theater, Africa has amazing storytelling traditions, uh, dramatic story readings. So we got tons of examples from people all over the world. So what I'm talking about specifically is the Western tradition of acting as defined by Wikipedia earlier. <laughs> so evidently 335 BCE, Thespis of Acarius stepped out from the chorus back in those days it was a very diegetic approach to theater. You had the chorus recite in unison the story. You'll see Woody Allen's films making fun of that or embracing that, depending on your perspective. Man, my seat post is falling down as I ride. I've got to get that fixed, man. Speaking of that, you know, Monday, I got my, well, obviously, because we had the ride together, Thank you so much for being on the ride with me on Monday. It was so good to be back on the ride. I have missed riding with you guys so much. But I put this, uh, I got this new wheel, rear wheel, and then I had to get a new cassette for it because my other one wouldn't fit. Actually, my other one was toast. My seven speed was toast. Um, my other seven speed is a free wheel, not a cassette. Anyway, I went from a seven speed to an eight speed, which means the cogs in the back are closer together you know, all those gears in the back of your bike? Well, they're closer together than with a seven, which means <laughs> my gears aren't shifting properly. I still have no back brake. Oh, it just, I don't like doing bike maintenance at 35 degrees. So the bike tends to fall apart. A lot of undue stress. It's not fair. I'm sorry, Hukui commuter. Anyway, back in 335 BCE, meaning a long ass time ago, Thespis of Acaria stepped out from the chorus. And this is the first documented time in Western tradition that this happened. And Thespis addressed the chorus as the character that the chorus was talking about. So that's like the first time acting happened. Now, if you remember, Aristotle got into some trouble about this because the Greeks very much believed in an observational world. They believed in the world that they could observe and that things that you couldn't observe either belonged to uh, the deity or were nonsense. So poetry and acting were illegal because they were imagined, they were false, they were not the real thing. That actor is acting the role of someone else, which is a lie, and we cannot tolerate lying. Whoa, that could have gone off on a political tangent. Ah, how the mind races. Anyway, that was the first instance. And then Aristotle kind of started refining in his po book Poetics. I highly recommend reading that if you're a writer or a director or maybe even a producer of films, any kind of story story-based content 
Aristotle's Poetics. But he really gets at the difference between what he called mimesis and diegesis. And that is the act of mimicking something or acting and the act of describing something. So voiceover narration is largely diegetic or diegesis. Whereas acting is largely mimetic or mimesis, right? Because an actor or actress imagines themselves as something else responding to things that aren't actually there, responding to emotions that aren't there. A lot of times when we get into filmmaking, obviously, because a lot of times you're doing those two shots and you're shooting the reaction of someone. But if you can't afford to run two cameras at once, that means you've got two different setups. So on this day, we're going to shoot, you know, the boyfriend saying something. And then the next day we're going to shoot the girlfriend saying something. Oh boy. I have huge respect for actors. See, and that's the part that I don't get. So as a film director, as someone who wants to direct actual people in films and stories, how do I help or knowing how to hinder? But I think it's all about communication. I think it's about sincere communication. That's something that I learned in a workshop with uh, Diane Bell and Chris Byrne a few years ago. They run a little thing called Rebel Heart Films, Rebel Heart Film Workshop. And it was basically a, a two-day case study on their first film, Obsolidia. It was a Sundance Award winner, Audience, Audience Spirit Award, and Cinematography. So they got some you know, good props for that little film. And it's super endearing. If you like, if you love indie films, that is a great one, I think. Obsolidia. O-B-S-E-L-I-D-I-A. And then they have a discussion about why it's spelled that way rather than a more obvious way. We also have an example of some of the first method acting in the fourth century. Polus playing the part of Electra mourning the death of her husband Orestes. I think I've got that right. If I don't have that right, would you please like put a note in the comments and correct me? Or if you're running across this on whatever, just let me know. Help, let's, don't let me tell lies. <laughs> I don't want to be like those old Greeks, you know? But there was a scene where he, playing she, had to carry an urn of ashes across the stage this was in mourning for our, her dead husband. Well, one of her sons had died recently. And so, hey, good morning on your left. One of her sons had died recently. And so she took actual ashes from her son, son's urn, and put it in this urn in the play so that as she was crossing the stage, it was less mimesis and more actual that she was mourning her, her son, the recent death of her son. And people were amazed by this evidently because it's like, how did, you, how did you embrace that? Well, you know, it's a trick. It's part of the method acting. Now, method acting evidently came, or I'm, hey folks, I am not a theater person. I'm not a theater history person. This is a summary from Encyclopedia Britannica and Wikipedia online. So, what is it? Konstantin Stanislavski? Oh man. Yeah, Stanislavski. He's the guy that said, there is no science to acting. And so we need to develop methods, we need to develop techniques to help ourselves as actors. He was an actor. And uh, developed all of these techniques. And a lot of them, which was really cool to, for me to learn, were rehearsal techniques, like how does one build a character? Because again, you're imagining this person, you're imagining how would this person respond and behave? What are their physical gestures based on their character, based on the story? And so one of the example of this that I had never heard of, and as a writer, this is like super, super cool, is this idea of not but. So the idea being 
the uh, when the op when the door opens, the uh, character inside the house does not invite me to come in, but invites me to keep going. So it's the idea of understanding the difference between what is what is actual and what is underneath the actual. To come in also means to keep going. So it's not come in, but keep going. And so in rehearsal, how to find those not but signifiers for yourself as an actor that help you get into the scene in a way that's more physical. So obviously, you know, this is like the Stella Adler school of thought it came from this. Um, Lee, uh, what is his name, Stras Strassman, Strasberg, uh, Daniel Day-Lewis, of course, is uh, famously known as a method actor, embodying the physicality of his characters to the extremes that on, uh, evidently on the set of the film Lincoln, uh, he, he would only respond if you addressed him as Mr. Lincoln. Now, obviously, as a director, you might have opinions and thoughts on that, but my thinking is, how do you meet an actress or actor where they are, where their learning is, where their ability to get into the role serves the story? So that's kind of where I am, folks. I don't really have any answers here as usual, which is kind of fun, I think. Um, but what brought me to all of this is uh, when we, a group of us went over and saw Little Women a few weeks ago, and uh, I'll be honest, the film confused me. By the end, I understood what had happened, but I didn't understand the continuity, the time continuity, because it wasn't linearly told, linearly told, which I really dig that. I remember seeing Pulp Fiction and thinking, wow, cinema just changed, and I was so dumb back then, I didn't know anything. I mean, I knew so much less back then. It's starting to sound like a Buddhist cone, isn't it? But basically, we saw Little Women, and I loved the feeling of it. I loved the feeling of the film. And, uh, and I think it was the acting. I think, I think having a director who is first an actor brings something to Little Women that made it electric, even though it was totally logically confusing. And I read, or I saw an interview where she talked about they, uh, they use color to help identify character a whole lot. And so she didn't really have room to go with the different looks of the different time periods. And so I think that's why we got confused. It's, a, it's a tough when you, when you get to that level of granularity in your filmmaking, I imagine. Anyway, that's where, where all this really started. Also, oh, the big announcement. Sunset Grove Film Festival. It's a new film festival that we're putting on. Submissions are now open for short films. It's a short film festival. We want... Our goal is to inspire wonder and uplift the consciousness of the planet through short films. That's it, that's all. We love short films. Um, we've been doing uh, short film festivals at our house for our, over 10 years now. And uh, we've just got more people on our list to invite to these than we've got room for in our living room. And so Sunset Grove Film Festival, if you are a filmmaker, please check it out. If you're an Idaho filmmaker, Get in touch with me at J-E-F-F-O-F-F-E-J. -F -F -E That's a palindrome on Jeffo. J-E-F-F-O-F-F-E-J. -F 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 -E Get in touch with me on uh, Twitter or Instagram, and I'll give you a code. If you're an Idaho filmmaker, but you better be an Idaho filmmaker, um, and I'll give you a code for uh, submission fee reduction there. Reduced submission fee, I guess is what we're talking about. Hey, folks, that is it for me. Thank you so much for joining me on this ride. I really appreciate you being here with me this morning. Uh, it is turning into a beautiful morning. Hey folks, thank you so much for riding with me this morning. I really appreciate you being on the ride with me. Um, hey, if you love riding a bicycle, get out on a bicycle. Whatever your bicycle is, maybe it's filmmaking, maybe it is sewing, maybe it's acting. If you are an actor or actress and you would like to be on the podcast with me, I would love to talk with you about how you get into character and how you do it and what you love a director to do, what you hate a director to do. Um, basically, what's your, what's your jam? What's your ride? I would love to hear it sincerely. And I think there's probably other people that would love that too. You want to hear that? Yeah, you want to hear it? Okay. There's no one there. There's no one there. Hey, folks, if you love riding a bike, get on a bike. 
Thanks for joining me on the ride, folks. It's the only one we get. See you on Monday.